Hey lovelies, welcome to another video. So today we are going to chat a little bit about my 24 weeks as well as about what happened at our specialist ultrasound on Thursday. Yeah, so let's get into it. So first things first, I'm extremely tired. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> I am feeling tired. I find myself needing a nap during the middle of the day now. That's the thing. I wake up with a lot of energy. I can do a whole bunch of things, no issue. And then right after lunch, like probably around two o'clock, I'm out of it. <laughs> That's it. Let's get started with what happened at our ultrasound. So we had a specialist ultrasound at the fetal diagnostic unit done to see if our baby girl had a right-sided aortic arch and if so if she had any other uh, issues with her heart etc so we went in and did the scan it took a while <laughs> we had a sonographer who did the scan first kind of check every single little detail they wanted to double check every single possible thing about baby girl uh, because the issues in connection with the right side aortic arch and congenital heart defects usually cause issues on other parts of baby's anatomy as well. So the sonographer wanted to double check every possible aspect of baby girl in order to know what we're dealing with. So after he was done, he actually explained at the beginning of the scan that he was not going to be able to tell us anything. We could ask simple questions, but any questions in regards to specific things like the heart, etc., we would have to wait for the doctor to come in. So once he was done and had all the images he wanted, he showed us, you know, arms, legs, fingers, hands, face, everything. Once we came to the end of the scan, uh, they had an obstetrician come in, and she was this lovely woman, absolutely lovely. Like I, I and the sonographer himself, like. Seriously, I just, I love these people because of the way they kind of handled everything. So it's just like the way he spoke about how we're going to look at the baby. Um, then we're going to have an obstetrician come in and have a look and give us an opinion. And if needed, you can also see a child cardiologist and everything will be fine. <laughs> so it was really just nice the whole way they went about it. So the obstetrician comes in and she also has a look at the scans. She specifically said, you know, she apologized in advance for murmuring and muttering with a sonographer and that she probably wouldn't be talking to us for a few moments, just trying to see everything she needs to see. So they did indeed murmur between themselves and kind of uh, looked at all the different aspects and the different sides and the different views and they were like a lot of pressure <laughs> a lot of pressure a lot of it was it was I think like oh my gosh at some points it was just ha ah, the uncomfortable sensation but it all had to do with baby girl's position and the images they needed to get so they basically wanted to have a look at her heart at the aortas and like veins and just e vessels everything and how they connected to the rest of the body and where they had to go, as well as a facial characteristic and just general uh, other little signs and issues that can lead to, in like there are indications basically of other issues in regards to congenital heart defects. So what uh, happened at the end of this was what I believe to be the, the best possible um, outcome to something like this at this stage. So according to the scans, baby girl does have a right-sided aortic arch, which as the doctor explained to us, is basically what happens when instead of the left-sided aortic arch remaining in place and the right-sided aortic arch kind of vanishing as the baby gets bigger, the opposite happens and the left-sided aortic arch vanishes, giving way to the right-sided aortic arch. So the norm is a left-sided aortic arch, no right-sided one. Now, there are quite a few cases of right-sided aortic arch. It is considered kind of a different kind of normal, I suppose. What they then checked and told us was that everything was connected to where it was supposed to be connected. Everything did what it was supposed to do, with the difference being that it started from the right instead of the left. So everything was connected properly. There were no uh, abnormalities on her face, there were no other signs of any other congenital heart defect or issues at the current time. I have Angel sitting under my desk making noises, guys, so it's just, yeah. <laughs> um, so basically, after checking for any other signs and anything else, what the doctor told us in regards to our specific diagnosis was that she has a right-sided aortic arch, that should not give her any issues later on in life. 
that we should not have any issues in regards to the rest of the pregnancy. In regards to birth, I can have her at the normal hospital I was supposed to have her. Uh, any way I like, like it, there's no reason why it should impact birth, delivery, all that kind of thing. However, after she is born, uh, we were offered the chance to do an amniocentesis <laughs> and check if she had the George syndrome. But the doctor also said that she didn't think it was completely necessary at this stage, clearly because there were no other indications of it. Usually in the case of the George syndrome, which is something that kind of goes hand in hand with congenital heart defects at times, not always, you always have other indicators on the heart or other sides, other like areas of the baby's anatomy. We had none of those. So she said that it would be okay if we actually tested for that after she was born. Uh, in the same logic, after she's born, we would also have to keep an eye on her in regards to breathing and feeding issues because when it comes to a right-sided aortic arch, because it starts from the right side, there is always the possibility of the way the aorta twists around the trachea and esophagus that it will cause issues in breathing and or feeding. So in the event that she has difficulty breathing, uh, little breathing spells, maybe choking on her food a bit more than you would expect, etc. We would need to look into maybe checking if she has had a vascular ring created around her uh, trachea and esophagus which is kind of a result of the RAA. All in all <laughs> it is Pretty good. This is extre extremely, extremely good. Um, in the case that the vascular ring is created, yes, she would need surgery, but that would be a surgery that would happen uh, later on, not necessarily as soon as she is born, not necessarily within the first weeks. It just depends on so many things as she gets bigger. My greatest fear and just sadness was, I think, the idea that the moment I gave birth, my baby would be taken from me straight away. It just, it scared me more than anything else because I couldn't be with her to, to be with her and just protect her and yeah. So we will be careful and always be informed. But at the end of the day, we have gotten a very good diagnosis and I am very, very happy with it. She will have a small little difference in her heart and that's okay. <laughs> uh, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean that she will have any, you know, but she'll be any different to any other child. It just means that we need to make sure that we are as careful as I think you would be with any newborn, really, who shows signs of like not being able to breathe, etc. Like you would be careful of your newborn, no matter what. <laughs> so that is what is up with baby girl. And we're very, very happy that that was the conclusion of that. As far as symptoms and being 24 weeks pregnant is concerned, uh, I don't even like, honestly, I still get some nausea. I'm living off of sour green apples. What are you doing? So the main symptoms at 24 weeks, I have to say, is heartburn, pelvic, well actually not pelvic, pubic bone pain. Oh my god, my pubic bone. I can't, there are times when I can't walk. Like legit, there are times when I can't walk from the pain. It's not constant. It's not all the time. It's not necessarily even every day. It's just like this pain that, oh my god. <laughs> And I remember having this with Angel, but I'm pretty sure it was much like later on. What are you singing? I'm pretty sure it was later on in the pregnancy, not this early. I don't know. But yeah, so heartburn, nausea, pubic bone pain, a lot of it. The bump's getting bigger, kicks are getting stronger. She's driving me mental with the kicks, um, but that also makes me feel a lot better, so kind of one of those things where you can never win really. This pregnancy, I'm, I'm surprised, like it's 24 weeks already. I feel like I haven't done anything to prepare for baby girl because we were kind of like in this frozen state waiting to find out like if we had to change our plans completely, if we had to like, you know, like you just don't know which way this could have gone. So we're just happy to be able to continue planning for baby girl. I will have baby girl clothing, items, like baby accessories, all that kind of thing, hauls coming up real soon because that's gonna start happening and then you've got like, the, the, the corona virus thing happening oh my god that's a whole other ball game we will talk about that because going into a hospital and then having baby and in this crisis situation oh my god i don't even i don't even oh hi thank you <laughs> so yeah i'm feeling okay i'm feeling good we are progressing i have gained a couple kilos over the past couple of weeks Maybe a little more, time-wise, not kilo-wise. 
So I am gaining some weight. Uh, I have switched to taking uh, chewable calcium as well as a liquid iron. That's all I can manage to do right now. Um, I take the calcium in the morning, right after breakfast. Chewable, citrus flavor, it actually helps with the nausea. And then in the afternoons, I take my liquid iron with some orange juice, and we're all good. <laughs> I cannot do anything else, I cannot take any other vitamins, but we're good. That's, it's pretty much the same thing I did with Angel's pregnancy as well, so I'm happy with that. Other than that, I have a whole ton of stuff coming for you guys. I'm just gonna, you know, I feel like I, I was in limbo, and I was frozen and stuck, and now I'm just able to breathe again. Because, you know, when you know what's going on, and you know what to expect, and you know what you need to do, it's a whole other thing, whole other thing. So yeah, I will see you guys in the next video, which will literally be about my pregnancy appointments or antenatal appointments, <laughs> uh, as well as just the whole thing with this coronavirus and pregnancy and uh, yeah, it's concerning. It's concerning because people aren't being as careful as they should be, I feel, here in Australia. I don't know. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.